Are you somebody that's fed up of being held back by your class or spec and unable to reach your arena goals? Well, there's no better time than the start of a new arena season to consider swapping your main. In today's video, we'll be breaking down the best two specs to main for every role for Patch 10.1, Dragonflight Arena Season 2. Oh, and by the way, if you're new to PvP or just wanting something strong to main in 10.1, chances are you have some important questions. This is why our Ask a Pro form is quickly becoming one of the best resources for any player looking to hit their goals in PvP. It's easy. As a skill cap member, all you need to do is visit the premium section of our Discord and then create a post in our Ask a Pro channel. Then someone within our professional network will see your post and leave you a detailed response even answering any additional questions you might have. Only skill cap members can create new posts, but anyone in our Discord can browse through the forum and learn valuable information. The current all-star melee in Season 2 is looking to be Enhancement Shaman, and as such, become our first melee recommendation to main for Patch 10.1. It's no secret that in Season 1, Enhancement Shaman has been practically unplayable, especially inside of a setting like Solo Shuffle. 10.1 changed this entirely though, as we saw buffs layered upon even more buffs, meaning not only did Enhancement receive some major damage increases to a lot of key abilities, but also not only gained some huge buffs to both old talents, and even received some very strong new ones. To help combat any previous survivability issues, especially against melee, a new talent called Burrow was added. This functions essentially as an immunity, like Ice Block, where you're unable to be attacked or targeted, but can freely be healed. Then, not to be overlooked, was the huge buffs to Seasoned Winds, allowing the damage reduction to stack up to 3 and last longer. Meaning, you can potentially have a 45% damage reduction against casters for 18 seconds, assuming your landing interrupts. This is crucial, as currently 10.1 is shaping up to be a very caster-favored meta, resulting in melee who can do very well into casters like Enhancement Shaman will end up performing very well. And considering Enhancement has historically done quite well into casters already, thanks to tools like Grounding Totem and Wind Shear combined with their inherently strong off healing, should only end up stronger this season. Currently, Enhancement's damage is for the most part revolving around the insane damage from Doom Winds, especially when combined with Ascendance. This provides you with high burst every minute, and then borderline illegal burst every 3 minutes on top of that. Outside of just their pop, Enhancement also has gained a lot more consistent pressure and even damage from range this season after big buffs to Lightning Bolt and Chain Lightning. Also, something massively overlooked that's helped shamans gain a footing this season was a change to reduce the mana cost of shamanism. This has always been an integral part of Enhancement Shaman's kit inside of Arena, but previously, due to the heavy mana cost, it was almost impossible to play, as you'd end up being out of mana almost immediately, then not have enough for certain utility or damaging abilities later. Finally, it also has to be taken into consideration that Enhancement has one of the most powerful tier sets, so already being a great pickup should only end up getting stronger as the season goes on. So if you're looking for a relatively safe and strong melee pick this season to give you the best possible chance to carry your solo shuffle partners and reach your rating goals this season, then look no further than Enhancement Shaman. After a pretty hefty shift in the meta this patch, as we mentioned, a lot of the previously popular melee classes have fallen by the wayside, and to be able to perform well as a melee, you have to be able to hold your own against the influx of casters. Our second melee recommendation to main for patch 10.1 has again historically always done very well into casters, Havoc Demon Hunter. Overall with the patch, Havoc didn't receive all that many changes, with just an increase to I-Beam and Fell Lance being the main ones, as well as a pretty neat buff to the PvP talent Blood Moon, giving you some nice additional souls alongside making Consume Magic AoE. Fell Lance, however, was definitely overperforming and got a slight tuning nerf on Rain from above, but the ability should still remain to be very strong. Shortly after the patch, Havoc got some slight buffs, including increases to most passive damaging abilities including Auto Attacks, Demon Bite, Demon Blades, and Fell Blade, as well as some pretty hefty buffs to Chaos Strike, First Blood, and Inner Demon. It also can't be underestimated how much the crowd control changes have actually benefited certain specs, and Demon Hunters are an example of this. As previously, one of the glaring weaknesses of the spec was dying inside of stuns. Now though, with most stuns being much shorter duration, that's less of a problem. Not to mention if crowd control falls in value, high sustain damage becomes far more potent, and that's exactly what Demon Hunter brings to the table. Another very solid reason to pick up Demon Hunter this patch is the potential composition options that it opens up, be that inside of Solo Shuffle or even ranked 3v3. As you probably have already noticed in your games, specs like Balance Druid and Destruction Warlocks are dominating the meta right now. Now, ask yourself what melee pairs up great with both of these specs. Last season, Destruction Warlock Demon Hunter was one of the most dominant compositions, then historically DH Boomy has always been a solid composition even when both specs are not at their strongest. So both of these comps should end up being at the forefront of the meta for this patch 
patch, offering a lot of options. So if you're looking for a high damage focused melee, or don't really like the whole utility side of Enhancement Shaman, then Demon Hunter will be our second recommendation for melee to main in patch 10.1. Rhett Paladins move aside, the new kings of 10.1 have arrived to take the throne. Destruction Warlock is looking to be without a doubt the most dominant spec right now as a whole. Generally, casters live or die based on their design, and to perform well in any meta, you have to have a combination of both instant damage if you are being heavily shut down, and then enough casted damage to still be a threat if left free, while being somewhat durable on top of that. Destruction is undeniably the full package. You've got a ton of instant damage coming from Shadow Burn, Conflag, Instant Incinerates, as well as cooldowns like Dimensional Rift and Infernal on top of that. Then, when left free, you've got the ability to close out any game with just one or two Chaos Bolts. This type of design makes the spec very comfortable to pick up and main for any level of player. 10.1 was kind to Warlocks as a whole, with great new additions like Impish Instincts to help with some additional survivability when being focused, and Soul Rip, a very unique talent, providing a lot of options both defensively and offensively. You also can't understate the importance of Precognition now being baseline, as Destruction was previously one of the most prevalent users of the old PvP talent variation. On top of that, 10.1 also brought some nice increases to damage, coming in the form of big buffs to Bonds of Fell, Call Observer, and most damaging abilities. We did, however, see some slight tuning nerfs in the May 16th hotfixes to reduce some of the damage of Incinerate and Shadowburn, as well as a slight nerf to the health of Observer. But honestly though, with the strength of destruction at the start of the season, we reckon they got off very lightly here, as undeniably a 10% nerf on Incinerate and 20% nerf on Shadowburn will not be anywhere near enough to bring the spec in line with other casters right now. But as a whole, having multiple schools of magic, high instant damage, high casted damage, solid crowd control, and really strong defensive options make Destruction Warlocks the complete caster package, and the latter representation and performance only justifies that further. So if you're looking for a solid caster to dominate Season 2 with, then look no further than Destruction Warlock. Not many specs can stand up to the strength of Destruction as it stands, but after the May 16th nerfs, Balanced Druids are set to be as close as it gets. 10.1 did wonders for Balanced Druid as a whole, as we saw huge buffs to both damage and astral power generation across the board, as well as many of the new features greatly improving the spec for the better, such as Precog becoming baseline, which for Balanced Druid has been a blessing. As thanks to multiple schools of magic, on top of the fast cast cyclones from Alkin Adept, they can utilize the embellishment to great effect. Then another aspect which is overlooked is how the crowd control nerfs across the board have actually indirectly buffed druids. The reason for this is that Cyclone was one of the few crowd controls that actually didn't get touched, which now makes the ability undeniably the most powerful crowd control in the game. And when combined alongside Mass Entanglement and Solar Beam, make Balanced Druids a force to be reckoned with on the crowd control front. The main strength of Balanced Druid though is similar to Destruction Warlock in a sense, and that's the fact you have that abundance of not only instant cast damage coming from your your dots, but then you can even do high AoE pressure or single target damage with either Starfall or Star Surge. Whereas if you're left free, you can completely take over the game by controlling the pace with Cyclones. Defensively, balance is very solid, being naturally very durable into melee and having the potential to avoid a lot of casted damage from opposing range DPS by leveraging their abundance of instant damage. Another great reason to pick up Balanced Druid for this patch is the strength of their tier set, where despite being one of the more dominant casters, both their 2-piece and 4-piece are shaping up to be among some of the best tier sets for PvP. Meaning, if you want a relatively safe caster pick with a lot of composition options, be that caster cleaves or when paired up with a melee, look no further than Balanced Druid for Season 2. Next up, we're moving into our healer recommendations. Fist Weavers, as we know, have been massively targeted with some recent hotfixes, making the spec far more matchup reliant. But when one door closes, another one opens, and casted Mist Weavers are climbing the ranks as the most dominant healers for Arena right now. As previously in Season 1, Mist Weaver was already on the cusp of being strong, but just massively overshone by the power of Fist Weaving as a whole. 10.1 brought a ton of great new additions, such as Chrysalis, which was previously a must-have talent, reducing the cooldown of Life Cocoon now being main default. This then opened up a very important PvP talent slot, which makes room for the new edition of Zen Spheres, probably one of if not the most slept on new edition in 10.1. Not only does this passively increase all healing to any friendly target of your choosing by 15%, but you can also then debuff an enemy to take 10% more damage from all sources and deal 10% less damage to you, which you can move around freely. This combined with Mystic Touch is basically giving any physical damage dealer on your team a permanent Dark Archangel you can swap around freely. 
As we mentioned, Mistweaver had already been getting slight buffs for the last few patches in an attempt to make it more of a favorable or competitive choice compared to how potent Fist Weaving once was. But further 10.1 buffs to both Vivify and Renewing Mist on top, Precog being made default, has catapulted Mistweaver to new heights, and quite honestly, they're almost, if not just as strong as Fist Weaving once was. And even then, Fist Weaving, despite those monstrous nerfs, will still remain to be playable. Now though, the spec will be far more matchup specific, and primarily played into just rot damage rather than every single matchup. If you prefer to play more of a passive sit back generic healer, then Mistweaver is exactly that. You have high healing, both instant and casted, and can quite honestly deal with any level of incoming damage if you're good at avoiding interrupts and crowd control, which you have all of the necessary tools to do quite easily. Combine all of this and you can see why monks are able to fit into and perform well in almost any lobby while on top of having less mana issues compared to other healers. If you prefer more of a hands-on approach to healing, then our second healer recommendation is for you, Disciplined Priest. Discipline has always embodied the epitome of a carry healer, having the ability to keep its team alive while also contributing to the game with additional damage, crowd control, and strong utility tools such as Power Infusion and Dark Archangel. The end of Season 1, Disc received a rather drastic buff, increasing the effectiveness of Power Word Shield by 25%. This alone, while it may have seemed minor, has had lasting effects and even managed to catapult Disciplined Priests into being one of the strongest healers at purely just keeping their team alive, in addition to all the offensive prowess they still bring in Season 2. Now though, when played with a more conservative, defensive playstyle, Discipline surprisingly excels at dealing with any level of damage, as you now have very strong healing between the combination of Radiance, Penance, and the now buffed Power Word Shield. 10.1 only added to the power of Discipline, with some great new additions such as slightly weaker version of Greater Fade in the form of Phase Shift, which can be a great tool at avoiding crowd control or damage. Shadow Word Death having its cooldown reduced to 10 seconds baseline, again giving Discipline both additional damage and tools to avoid crowd control. As well as Power Word Radiance now being put onto the Radiant School of Magic rather than Holy, giving Discipline a reliable third school of magic to heal with on top of having Precognition now. Most impactful of all though was the change to make Dome of Light tied into Power Word Barrier Baseline, although the cooldown isn't affected anymore as it opens up a previously must-have talent slot, which for a spec like Discipline that has a ton of very strong situational PvP talents does wonders for its strength. And as we all know, currently there is no other healer that comes even close to rivaling the sheer amount of defensive cooldowns that Discipline brings to the table, having two charges of Pain Suppression, Power Word Barrier, and even Void Shift to rotate through in order to keep your team alive. So if you're looking for a dominant healer that still holds true to its original offensive DNA, look no further than Discipline Priest as they continue to be a force to be reckoned with. Be that from their additional damage, strong healing, potent cooldowns, or just overall team utility. Before we wrap things up, we want to tell you about another exciting new feature at SkillCap.com. For a limited time, SkillCap members can submit their gameplay to be reviewed by Rank 1 Gladiators, who will watch through arena footage and give personalized advice for how to improve. These reviews are added to our hundreds of arena commentaries and are quickly becoming one of the best resources for hitting your goals and getting the rating you've always wanted. Last season, we helped thousands of PvPers hit their rating goals, from Challenger all the way up to Rank 1. So what are you waiting for? Visit the links in the description below to start your journey today. So there you have it guys, what we believe to be the best specs to main for Dragonflight Arena Season 2. Thank you all for watching, and from everyone here at Skillcapped, we hope you have a great day.